I think what you're pointing to is the miracle of the Quran. Isn't it? As the Prophet ﷺ said, all prophets were given something which would cause people to believe in them. This is in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The thing which I was given is none other than a revelation, the Quran, which Allah revealed to me. So I hope that I will have the most followers among them on the Day of Judgment. It was the definitive miracle of the Prophet ﷺ. It is not the only miracle. He was given other miracles, many other miracles. But when he talked about the miracle which was given to the Prophet, to convince their people that they were in fact prophets of Allah. The miracle he mentioned here was the Quran. Not the splitting of the moon, not the water coming from between his fingers, the variety of other miracles which he did by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentioned the Quran. So, that gives the Qur'an a particular significance that we need to grasp, we need to understand. The miracle of the Qur'an. The other prophets were given miracles which if you ask the people who believe in those prophets, if you ask them to prove that they were prophets of Allah, based on the miracle, could they do it? Moses split the Red Sea. Jews, he w this was a sign to them. But if you asked a Jew to prove that Moses was a prophet of Allah, show us his miracle. Can they show it? No. If you ask the Christians who claim to follow Jesus, can you prove that Jesus brought the dead back to life? Lazarus who was mentioned in their book, who was dead and he called him to get up and he got up. Is Lazarus still around? Can you show him to us? No. So, those miracles were limited to the times in which they took place. Because those prophets were sent for particular times. Similarly, the other miracles of the Prophet Muhammad splitting of the moon. Well, I know you've heard, some people said, okay, when uh, Armstrong and the others went to the moon, they saw the split that was on the moon. It's not true. That's a story Muslims made up, unfortunately. Out of desperation to prove that Islam is really the truth, you know, all kinds of stories started to circulate when Neil Armstrong went to the moon. He heard the Adhan on the moon. Right? You all heard that one, right? Reality is that those miracles, we cannot prove them. We believe in them because they are narrated to us by authentic narrations. We believe in Jesus raising the dead, Moses splitting the water. But, because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was to be a prophet for all times, then it meant his miracle had to continue, had to be available at all times. And that's what is special about the Quran. It is a miracle in and of itself which will stand until the last days. It is a miracle, fundamentally a literary miracle. Yes, there are issues also in the Quran about science. The Quran speaks something about science. These things were found out now, which we didn't know before. 1,400 years ago, people didn't definitely didn't know. There are other issues found in the Quran, but Primarily the Qur'an is a literary miracle. 
Now, occasionally, missionaries may say to us, if I bring a chapter or a book written like your Quran, will you then become a Christian? Because you claim, because the challenge of the Quran first began with imitating the whole Quran itself, as in Surah Al-Isra, Allah says there, say if all mankind and the jinn would come together to produce the like of this Quran, they could not produce its like even though they exerted all their strength in aiding one another. Later, Allah reduced it to 10 surahs. He said, or do they say that he has invented it? Say to them, bring 10 invented surahs like it and call for help on whomever you can besides Allah if you are truthful. That's Surah Hud, 11th chapter verse 13. And then finally in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says there, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِمِثْلِهِ And if you are in doubt about what I revealed to my servant, then bring a single surah like it. وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And call your witnesses besides Allah if you are truthful. This is the challenge. So the Christian says, okay, if I bring a chapter written in Arabic like the one that you have, will you then give up your faith and join mine? People get scared when this is presented to them. Because in Arabic, we really can't understand the miracle. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the Muslim world today are not Arabs. And the vast majority of the Arabs don't really speak Arabic anymore. <laughs> I mean, they speak something like Arabic, but not really speaking Arabic anymore. So, if somebody wrote something in Arabic, who had a flair for writing, and it sounded like the Quran, then you would be up against the wall, finished. The proof has been brought. So, when they bring this challenge, mostly we are afraid. We wouldn't say, yes, you bring it, and I'm ready to become a Christian. In the Prophet ﷺ's time, what do you think the Sahaba would have said, if somebody said that? They would have said, bring it. I'm ready. No problem, I'll follow you. Because they were confident that this was in fact a miracle. The only way that we can grasp the miracle of the Quran today, we who don't know any Arabic, or what Arabic we know is not sufficient to grasp the miraculous nature of the Quran. The only way that we can understand it is just to look at it in its historical context. If we look at the life of Prophet Muhammad and his relationship to the Meccans, the Meccans, they were the center, they were at the center of trade in Arabia. Mecca was the center of trade where all the trade routes through which all the trade routes passed. And it was also the religious center. It was the fact that it was the religious center which made it the center of commerce. Because all of the various tribes used to come to Mecca to worship their idols which were kept around the Kaaba. So when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came along and said, all of these idols are false. There is only one God, Allah. And all of the rest of this is false. What did that mean to the Meccans? This was danger. Their whole economic base was threatened. Their position in Arabia was threatened. 
This was a very dangerous call. So they tried to stop him, tried to get him to stop. They talked to him first. Why are you saying this? Do you want to be the leader of Mecca? Okay, we'll make you leader. Or uh, women. Why, why do people do these things? Women. You want the most beautiful women? We'll take from our daughters the most beautiful and give them to you. Oh, okay, money, money. Maybe it's money. We'll gather from all of our wealth. We'll give it to you. He wouldn't stop. So, okay, let's talk to his uncle, Abu Talib. Try to get him to stop. Put pressure on the uncle. 